So there's a problem that can happen when using the compressor and the smart switch. And that's if the smart switch shuts off the compressor while the motor is running. The air will not get released from in between the check valve and the motor. And when you try to go start up the motor again, it's gonna lock up, it won't start up. So I shut it off right in the middle of a cycle and watch when I try to start it up. Yeah, it doesn't work, it doesn't run. So I shut it off right away. So what I'm gonna to do to allow the compressor motor to start up again, is I'm gonna T into this pressure relief line and then I'm gonna use this normally open solenoid valve. Therefore the compressor motor will always be able to start up at no pressure, no matter how it was shut down. So this setup is called an electric unloader valve. So this smart switch has been working great to control this compressor and turn the compressor off at night and on in the morning and off over the weekends and also to turn it off if the motor is running a cycle that's um, too long, like if there's an air leak somewhere, a busted line. However, there is a slight issue with using a switch that's external to the compressor itself rather than using the regular compressor switch. And that is that if the motor is running a cycle and it's compressing and you shut it off externally, like with the smart switch, while the motor is running, it's not going to relieve the pressure between the tank and the compressor motor because that's usually done mechanically by this unloader valve over here that, here I'm gonna turn it on, I'm gonna run it. So I'm using this switch over here to run it. And you'll see that this unloader valve, when you turn it off, that's the psh you hear is this unloader valve over here that's mechanically operated and unloads the air and relieves the air pressure in the line between the motor and the tank. Now, if you don't do that, the motor will not be able to start up because there's too much back pressure for the motor to start. So let me demonstrate that. I'm just gonna do it really quickly to not do any damage to the compressor. The compressor motor's running. Let's say the smart switch shuts off right in the middle of the cycle. This line is still under a lot of pressure. See, I can't squeeze it anymore. And so the pressure has not been unloaded. So now, when the smart switch is turned on again, it doesn't work, it just hums. So I turn it off right away to not do any damage. It would probably blow the breaker. So currently, the only way to relieve that pressure is to use the mechanical unloader valve. There we go, the pressure was relieved. And so now, if I turn it back on using the smart switch, the compressor starts up again fine. This is a 110 volt AC pneumatic valve sold by Talons on Amazon. And specifically, this is a normally open valve, which is pretty rare. So it comes with a valve, it comes with a few fittings and some Teflon tape. So I wanted a normally open valve such that when there's no power going to the compressor motor, it's going to unload the pressure and relieve the pressure from the compressor motor so they can start up again fine. So what I'm gonna to do to allow the compressor motor to start up again is I'm gonna T into this pressure relief line. And so I found these one quarter inch copper tube fittings that go to a one quarter NPT. And I'm gonna T into that using this fitting. And then I'm gonna use this normally open solenoid valve and attach it to that fitting and wire it in parallel with the compressor motor such that while the compressor motor is running, this valve is always staying closed. When the compressor motor shuts off, when the power is removed, this valve opens and it unloads the pressure from the compressor motor. Therefore, the compressor motor will always be able to start up at no pressure, no matter how it was shut down. So this setup is called an electric unloader valve. This is the direction of the airflow, so that's the outlet, this is the inlet. So I'm gonna thread this in here.
And the Teflon tape that came with this thing is not very good. I wasn't able to get this Teflon tape to work very well. This is better quality Teflon tape than the stuff that came with it. The Teflon tape is really just to lubricate the threads as you're going in. The taper on the NPT is what is doing the sealing. Yeah, this Teflon tape is much better. So the Teflon tape that came with this solenoid valve was pretty much trash. I don't have the proper copper tubing cutter, so I'm just going to use this uh, mini hacksaw here to cut this tube. I'm going to rotate it a little bit back so that I'm not cutting right at the edge of this bend where it's distorted. I want it on a straightaway where it's not distorted and still give me plenty of space to tuck this in. May not even need to make another cut really. Um, maybe just a small cut so it's not bending out too crazy. Probably cut it off right about here. And then clean up the inner edges using an X-Acto blade or here I have a chamfer tool blade and then clean up the outside edges. I had to remove the whole front panel in order to get to this switch right here. Make sure that the electricity to the compressor is removed before opening the switch. Oops. Strip these wires back a little bit further. To the cover, I'm gonna add a hole right here for a small wire grommet so that the wires are well protected when they pass into the enclosure. And that's going to snap in there. So the top level is the compressor side of the contacts, so that's where I want to wire the solenoid switch into. And I'm just going to stick them under here. Well, I discovered an issue with this valve, and that's when the power is turned on to it, all it does is vibrate, it turns on and off really quickly. And so I think what's wrong is that it's not the right kind of coil. There's no label on the coil, so maybe they put the wrong one in the 110 box, because it shouldn't be vibrating like that. Okay, so I received a replacement solenoid valve from Amazon and this one functions as it, as it should. So when I turn it on, the compressor motor is not hooked up right now. Just, I was just trying out the solenoid valve. I can feel it energized, and it's buzzing a tiny bit, but it's just properly energized. It's not rattling, and it's not switching back and forth rapidly like the other one was. So this is kind of crazy to have to mod the valve, but this valve is rated up until 145 PSI, but when the compressor motor was stopping, it wasn't always opening. And so it's probably exceeding 145 PSI, which means that this orifice here is too big and the spring inside the body is not strong enough to retract the piston from this hole. So my solution is gonna be, since I don't need a lot of volume, I don't need a lot of flow, is to make this hole smaller. So I'm gonna fill this with solder and then drill a smaller hole in here. Okay, so I heated it up with a torch and then I filled the bottom in here with solder and I blocked the hole off with this piece of steel. And so now I'm gonna take this apart and drill it. Obviously I let it cool down first. I wasn't able to get the solder to work out that well. I tried it from two different sides. When I was blocking off this end, I kept getting an air bubble and when I blocked out the other end, I just made a big mess, so I gave up on that. So it's kind of ridiculous that I had to make this little adapter to go into here to make this hole smaller. So here's the modified hole. 
I use the number 55 drill to drill that out and dome the top a little bit. Okay, so I now have the electric unloader valve set up in series with the mechanical unloader valve. And now it works after modifying the orifice to be a smaller orifice, a 55 drill size. And then I added a valve on the outlet so we can always manually close this off if something goes wrong with this valve and it's just allowing air to flow through. So now the smart switch is off, red. I'm gonna turn it on and you're gonna see the airline pressurize. And then when I turn it off, using the smart switch, the airline depressurizes because the electric unloader valve opens up. So before this uh, electric unloader valve was not reliable before the orifice modification.